As we get older, our bodies start to malfunction. From losing vision, reduced hearing, weaker bones, and lack of energy, getting older can be scary. But there's one impairment that is feared more than the others. Alzheimer's. During initial stages of the disease, individuals will experience mild memory loss. But as it continues into later stages, the symptoms become much more frightening. Losing the ability to understand time and place, not being able to speak coherently, forgetting personal details like family members and previous life events, and changes in your physical abilities such as walking, sitting, and swallowing. These are all symptoms of late stage Alzheimer's. But as much as we can read about it and attempt to understand it, that is still nowhere near as terrifying as experiencing the disease for yourself. This album attempts to bridge that gap, everywhere at the end of time. An audio experience written to portray the slow and distressing progression of Alzheimer's. This project was written by Leyland Kirby, better known by his artist name, The Caretaker. And it features six studio albums which represent a stage of Alzheimer's, starting at stage one and progressing all the way to stage six. Leyland attempts to convey the experience of Alzheimer's through different sound techniques. Let's take a deeper dive into each stage of the project and gain an understanding of how stages 1 through 6 relates to the progression of Alzheimer's and what the significance of each of the stages are. Along with this, we will be exploring an unsolved mystery related to the final moments of this project. Stage 1 here we experience the first signs of memory loss. This stage is most like a beautiful daydream, the glory of old age and recollection, the last of the great days. The first stage is around 40 minutes long and it features 12 different tracks. The most popular one by far being It's Just a Burning Memory, sampled by this song. After listening to stage one, I felt very bittersweet. The songs felt like a dance of joy and dread as they featured a seemingly sweet, coherent melody along with aspects of disorder and confusion. To understand this better, let's look at an example. Track A4 called Childishly Fresh Eyes. If we listen to the original song that Kirby sampled called Moonlight and Shadows, we can hear how it sounds more coherent and sweet. And now, let's compare that to the caretaker's version of the same song. We can hear how the caretaker's version sounds so much more distorted and confused. So, how did Kirby pull this off? Well, he used a few different techniques. He slowed the original song down and made the pitch lower. Added some reverb. Added quite a bit of delay and he added vinyl sound effects. Listening to some other songs from stage one, we can hear the same techniques. The song A6, Things That Are Beautiful and Transient, is a good example of this. Here is the original song. And here's the caretaker's version. And if you listen to the entirety of stage one, most of these songs implement the same techniques. Now let's look at the artwork for stage one. Ivan Seal, who made this cover art, along with all the other cover arts in this project, called this work of art, Beaten Frowns After. And what you will notice about all of his work is that it seems familiar, yet you cannot identify what exactly it is. To me, this one looks like a blank newspaper rolled up, but you may see something different. Stage 2. The second stage is the self-realization and awareness that something is wrong with the refusal to accept that. More effort is made to remember, so memories can be more long form with a little more deterioration in quality. The overall personal mood is generally lower than the first stage and at a point before confusion starts setting in. The second stage is 41 minutes long featuring 10 different tracks. Throughout this stage, the melodies are still coherent, but the reverb and dark atmosphere is noticeably more apparent. There are songs such as D3, Last Moments of Pure Recall, and they seem to be more uplifting in spirit. But there are also songs that highlight the opposite, 
such as D1, I still feel as though I am me, which simply feels like you're fighting a losing battle. To me, this stage feels more bipolar. Some vague moments of happiness, but the memories you are fighting to remember feel as if they are beginning to fade away, as if the dance between joy and dread is becoming more of a fight than a dance. The artwork of stage 2 is called Itter Pick Gown in Kathen Stysper, which translates to I have no idea what this means. But this piece features an abstract flower pot with flowers that seem to be fighting for life. And that's the same conclusion I got for stage two of this project. The caretaker is now experiencing stronger symptoms of memory loss, but like the description says, he refuses to accept that. Stage three. Here, we are presented with some of the last coherent memories before confusion fully rolls in and the grey mists form and fade away. Finest moments have been remembered, the musical flow in places is more confused and tangled. As we progress, some singular memories become more disturbed, isolated, broken, and distant. These are the last embers of awareness before we enter the post-awareness stages. The third stage is 45 minutes long with 16 different tracks. This stage is similar to the previous stage, but it just feels more depressing. The tracks feel as if you have begun falling down a well of sorrow and confusion. Tracks like Bewildered and Other Eyes really convey that feeling to me. And the more you progress into stage 3, the worse it gets. The cover art for this stage is called Hag, and looks similar to a bouquet of flowers, but Yet again, it seems impossible to be certain what you are looking at. Now, stage 3 is described as the last moments of awareness. So, transitioning into stage 4, I was really curious to see what this new phase would sound like. Stage 4 Post-awareness stage 4 is where serenity and the ability to recall singular memories gives way to confusion and horror. It's the beginning of an eventual process where all memories begin to become more fluid through entanglements, repetition, and rupture. The fourth stage is about an hour and a half long, featuring four different tracks, so each track is a little over 20 minutes. Holy. Instantly, I noticed the difference between the previous awareness stages and these post-awareness stages. The music just felt disorganized. This stage felt like a scattered puzzle of memories put together in a way that makes no sense. I also noticed some reappearing samples. For example, in stage 1, it's just a burning memory, we hear this melody. And in stage 4, at 2 hours 24 minutes and 48 seconds, we hear this. You can hear the sample from stage 1 being played in stage 4, but in a much less fun manner. This can be interpreted as the caretaker recalling certain memories in a much more disorganized way. Now, the cover art for stage 4 is called Glitz Holder, and it's my favorite one of the project. You can discern the image of a girl looking to the side, but again, it seems almost unrecognizable. And I guess that's what dementia does to people, even close family members may be forgotten. So, although we can distinguish different people and different faces, individuals with late-stage Alzheimer's can't. And this cover art portrays that difficulty. Stage 5 Post-awareness Stage 5 Confusions and Horror More extreme entanglements, repetition and rupture can give way to calmer moments. The unfamiliar may sound and feel familiar. Time is often spent only in the moment leading to isolation. If we look at the cover art for this stage, personally, I see a f***ed up slinky. And believe it or not, the title of this slinky painting is Septa Transistis Mestion Skurs. Not only does this album simulate dementia, but it also simulates dyslexia as well. The fifth stage is also about an hour and a half in length, featuring yet again four songs. Throughout the vast majority of stage 5, it is very frightening. The melodies are incomprehensible, the soundscape is completely dark and uninviting, and throughout this entire stage, I felt as if I should stop listening. This was the first time in the entire project that I genuinely didn't know if I wanted to continue listening. It just felt too horrid. but. 
Throughout stage 5, there were brief moments of relief. While I was listening to the project, I was writing down my thoughts on the music. And here's what I wrote down during a small period of clarity in stage 5. I was genuinely excited that you could hear the harmonies, even for 20 seconds. It just felt good to listen to something even somewhat melodic, but clarity can only last so long, so back into the darkness we go. Stage 6 Post-awareness stage 6 is without description. This stage's cover art is called Necrotomagod, and it features the backside of a painting. It feels like we're seeing something that we're not supposed to see, and listening to the stage feels like a complete void. No music, no harmonies, no hope, no joy. In this stage, the Alzheimer's patient seems to be completely overtaken by dementia, without any lingering memories to cling on to, and no spirit to fight the disease. The dance between joy and dread is no longer a duet, but a solo performed by dread. But at the very last moments of this project, something changes. After listening to hours of dissonant music, the final six minutes are blissful. The void of darkness is cleared and the sound of a choir fills your ears. This is the climax of the entire six hour project and it is very emotional to say the least. Here's a clip of Anthony Fantano reacting to this moment. <sighs> Shit. Oh and once the choir is done, there's a minute of silence to end the project. And this minute of silence represents the death of the Alzheimer's patient. The clarity of the last six minutes have stumped some listeners. Why would this blissful choir represent the final moments of somebody who has such a traumatic disease? Terminal lucidity. This blew my mind. Terminal lucidity is an unexpected return of consciousness, mental clarity, or memory shortly before death in individuals with severe psychiatric or neurological disorders. So believe it or not, right before some Alzheimer's patients die, they experience terminal lucidity and miraculously regain mental clarity and their memories. And again, believe it or not, science cannot explain this phenomenon. This article states, it is estimated 43% of people who experience this brief lucidity die within 24 hours, and 84% die within a week. Some episodes of lucidity have been reported to occur in the presence of loved ones. Others have reported that music can sometimes improve lucidity. Isn't that crazy? Just bump some Metro Boomin and your GMA regains mental clarity. Now that we have summarized all six stages of Everywhere at the End of Time, let's dig a little bit deeper. Finding every single sample used in this project has been a goal of the listeners for about eight years now, and most of them have been found. If we look at the Caretaker fan Wikipedia, it gives us a lot of details about the samples. There is a sound direction chart which correlates the panning of a sample to a color. So if a sample was playing in your left ear, it would show up as this color, and if it was panned in your right ear, it would show up as this color. Along with this, there are asterisks to mark if the panning is hard, soft, or a mixture of both. Hard panning is a sudden change between left and right, while soft panning is a slower, more gradual change between ears. So that explains the colors we see in the left column and the asterisks we also see. But there is still one big mystery. One sample has yet to be found, and it just so happens to be the most popular part of the entire project. The ending. The final six minutes of this project, which is the most emotionally charged part of the entire thing, features a choir singing, like I said before. But where did this audio come from is still a huge mystery. Now, if you look at the Caretaker wiki, it shows the sample has been found, but that's not entirely true. They claim the sample is St. Luke Passion number 31, O oh Jesus Christ. And if you look this up, you find this song. And it does sound very similar to the end of Everywhere at the End of Time, 
But before we claim victory, let's look at the comments. And here's a pinned comment by, believe it or not, Kirby himself. The person who created Everywhere at the End of Time commented on this video. Kirby says, it's close and a good find, but it's 100% not the sample used. The version I used was not as professionally recorded and had a piano as the leading instrument. It's unlikely any other tracks from this were used in Caretaker releases as I don't own this vinyl. It's a great version though of that particular track in Focus. So Kirby confirms that this song is the same song as the ending of Everywhere at the End of Time, but it isn't the specific performance Kirby used. And this is still an unsolved mystery, and it will most likely stay that way. To see why, let's look at some more information about this missing sample. This comment was made under a Reddit post regarding the lack of information about this sample. It notes that 50 copies of the record were given out to each member of the choir, and somehow Kirby managed to grab two copies of the record 30 years later. Along with that, here are the two main reasons we may never find this sample. First of all, Kirby unironically does not remember the name of the record. Bro's got stage 5 Alzheimer's. And secondly, this record is a white label, meaning there is no information regarding the artist, song, or producer on the record. This Reddit comment brings more perspective to this mystery, stating, it's entirely possible that the record just doesn't exist online, yet or ever. Having crate dug in this kind of music, a good part of the time the records you find hardly exist at Discog pages, let alone YouTube links. So if you're looking to claim a piece of internet history, if you find this sample, your name will be engraved in the Everywhere at the End of Time Hall of Fame. If you have watched other videos analyzing Everywhere at the End of Time, you would most likely hear a lot of overlap in perspective. But I think there's something crucial missing from most videos that really puts into perspective how terrifying Alzheimer's actually is. Here's how I'm gonna explain it. If you have ever went on YouTube and searched up LSD simulator or something like that and watched a video, you can kind of visualize what taking that drug is like. But at the same time, you understand that actually taking the drug would be a completely different experience than watching that simulation. And I think we can apply that to everywhere at the end of time. This project is an audio simulation of what dementia would be like. And as well put together this project is, the true horrors of dementia are probably much, much worse. Throughout this project, our brains can make sense of the nonsense. We understand why the sound is deteriorating, but Alzheimer's patients don't have this luxury. They cannot make sense of the nonsense. As research has shown, individuals in the later stage of dementia may not be aware of their condition. So I guess now we know that ignorance isn't always bliss. To conclude this video, I would like to show you this picture. Everything looks familiar, but your brain struggles to make out even one object in this photo. This is what I imagined dementia would be like. Different memories and different people feeling familiar, but not knowing why. The confusion would be horrifying. So let's just genuinely appreciate that we can understand. We can recognize our family members, our past life events, our loved ones. We can make sense of the nonsense. Everywhere at the End of Time is an incredible project, and it has made me appreciate remembering a lot more. So go out there, make some memories, and cherish them, and remember that I made all the music you're hearing in this video myself, including this outro song. So if you want to support me, go to any major streaming platform and search up Royal 2K and listen to my music. I would appreciate it a lot. Thank you guys again.